Hello and welcome to this session on myocarditis and pericarditis. This is uh, Sri Kumar, uh, Professor of Pathology and Director for Research and Postgraduate Studies, Masa University, Malaysia, taking you through the session. Now, today's session is basically to guide you on through what are all the etiological factors and pathogenesis of myocarditis and the morphology and the pathological conditions. And also to give you an overview of pericarditis and the various types of pericarditis. Now, myocarditis is an inflammatory disease of the heart, which frequently occurs due to viral infections and also probably due to post-viral immune-mediated responses. In fact, world over, it is one of the important causes of dilated cardiomyopathy. And the diagnosis for uh, this would be based on um, both clinical presentation and pathological features and other diagnostic methods, non-invasive diagnostic methods such as uh, uh, cardiac MRI. But the gold standard is pathology, which is endomyocardial biopsy, which is what we are going to show you later in the slides. Now, as I've listed here, the major causes of myocarditis are, we have both infective and non-infectious. Among the infectious, viruses such as Coxsackie virus, echovirus, influenza, HIV, and cytomegalovirus. And others include chlamydia, the rickets here that causes typhus fever, and certain types of bacteria such as uh, Clostridium diphtheria and uh, Neisseria's meningococcus. Myocarditis also occurs due to infections with protozoa, helminths, and fungi. Among the protozoa, one of the important aspects that causes myocarditis is trypanosoma, trypanosoma cruzi which also causes Chakas disease and toxoplasmosis. Helminths that cause trichinosis and even fungi that cause candida and aspergillus. Now, as much as there are numerous immune mediated reactions and certain unknown causes, myocarditis can be either, as I said, due to infectious or non-infectious triggers. In fact, even though there are many remarkable advances in diagnosis, now understanding the pathophysiological mechanisms and treatment have been recently exposed. In many cases, you will actually need the mechanical support or heart transplant. And there is some evidence that there is immunosuppressive and immunomodulating therapy uh, effective for uh, non-infective cardiomyopathy. And uh, so there can be different infectious and non-infectious triggers. And according to WHO, myocarditis is an inflammatory disease diagnosed by establishing histological, immunological, and immunohistochemical criteria. So depending on whether they arise from viral or post-viral immune-mediated responses, with newer investigations like polymerase chain reaction and in situ hybridization, it is easy to detect the viruses or other immune mechanisms in the endomyocardial biopsies. And it could be anything ranging from enterovirus, as I said, to adenovirus, to parvovirus B19 or herpes virus. And uh, the immune mediated causes could be post viral, post streptococcal, which is most commonly in rheumatic fever. If you remember, we discussed in a class on rheumatic fever on the fact that rheumatic fever occurs due to streptococcal infection, systemic lupus erythematosus, drug hypersensitivity, if there is a hypersensitivity to drugs like sulfonamides and methyl dopa, rejection after a transplant has occurred, now where the body rejects the transplant, and unknown causes could be sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a multi-system disease which can affect multiple organs and produces granulomas all over. And that affects the heart also. And it could also be giant cell myocarditis. Now, grossly, this is what a heart looks like in myocarditis. The entire heart is enlarged, if you can see my pointer. So there's cardiac hypertrophy. And if you take a cut section, there will be ventricular dilation. The ventricle is dilated. In fact, this is one of the causes of dilated cardiomyopathy. Okay. So the myocardium becomes pale 
it is pale all over and sometimes you can see areas of hemorrhage these are all small areas of hemorrhage within the muscle small darker areas here so predominantly the myocardium is pale so in terms of gross examination now in about 12 percent of sudden deaths in young adults it has been seen that the post-mortem data shows that it is due to myocarditis in fact there are some clinical trials like myocarditis treatment trial which reports that the incidence of uh, biopsy proven myocarditis in unexplained heart failure is up to about 10 percent okay so now, in terms of the gross description, as you see, there is ventricular dilation and the myocardium is pale with hemorrhagic foci. Now, microscopically, we see a certain specific features as shown in this picture. Now, this is a picture taken from the uh, heart wall of a patient who has had a first incident of myocarditis and later on a relapse. Now, in all cases, we see this is a low power view and a high power view. You see that the heart muscle cells show a lot of uh, a myocardiocyte necrosis in the first case and in the relapse as well. When you zoom into the higher power, you can see the same thing, myocardiac necrosis. These are all the myocardiac necrosis, but most important, you see a lot of inflammatory cells. Now, all these are T lymphocytes when you stain it with immunohistochemistry. And this is interstitial fibrosis. This fibrosis. This fibrosis here. 